show is going to be about prior written notice. And um, it's going to be about what you guys can do when you're in a team meeting and you ask the school district something and they tell you no. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you, I'm going to show you what you guys can do when you're in a team meeting. Okay. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, Malo. Sorry about that. So, um, Wendy, Malo, Cody, Edgar. Also glad you guys found me. I don't know what happened with Facebook. They just decided to change the thing, I guess, because they got in so much trouble, you know, for releasing all that personal information <laughs> without anybody's knowledge. So anywho, they changed their motto, I guess. So anyway, um, dive people where in the middle of my thing. It's irritating me. Hey, Kimberly, girl. Okay. So anywho, I've even gone to a team meeting, which I know most of you guys are going to say, yes, this has happened. So you go to a team meeting, right? And you ask the school district, you say, uh, I want um, Wilson, you know, Wilson reading program for my kid. And they say no. <laughs> I know, Milo, right? So anyhow, they say no. And so for some strange reason, and their little teensy brains, they think that's all they have to do is tell you no. Here's the thing, guys. Every single time they say no, you tell them so. You're going to put that in writing, right? And you're going to tell me why, and you're going to tell me what for, and you're going to tell me how come, and you're going to tell me what you relied on. You're going to tell me all of that, right? Yeah, okay. So they have to tell you all of this stuff, okay? Um, let me show you why. So what I'm going to try to do is break down prior written notice, okay? Prior written notice just isn't a piece of paper telling you when the team meeting is, okay? It's not just about... Um, Anything that they send you, that's not prior written notice. Prior written notice is this. Prior written notice is when these foods want to change something or they're proposing to change something. For instance, like they're proposing to take your kid off an IEP, which this actually just happened to a friend of mine, where they're, um, they're, they're planning on taking your kid off an IEP because they did all of their testing and the testing showed that your kid was doing really, really good in all academic areas, except there's one little problem. The behavior issue. You see, your kid has ADHD. Your kid's behavior is interfering with your kid getting an education. So these fools think they're going to take your kid off an IEP. So the first thing, that's called changing the identification because you're going from a child who has special needs to getting specially designed instruction to a child with nothing. In order for them to do that, they have to test. In order for them to do that, they have to provide you what's called written, they have to give you, you have to consent to test. You don't consent to test, they can take their little decision and put it where the sun doesn't shine. That's the way this works, okay? All right, so now what I want you guys to do is look at this, okay? Look at this with me. These are the four areas, okay? There's four areas to initiate that when the school district, now see, this isn't about you. For some strange reason, school districts think you guys are supposed to implement idea. Yeah, they're crazy. So prior written notice by the agency is not in here that talks about by the parent. This is all about the school district, okay? All of the regs are about them and what they were supposed to do because Congress wrote this for them to do and for your kid to receive, because they're confused. Anyway, prior written notice by the public agency or by the school district. This is what goes into prior written notice. This is the content, okay? Now, these are the areas. We're gonna talk about the areas first. So when the school district proposes to initiate or change the identification of your kid, so your kid could go from no services two services okay your kid could go from an iep to a 504 or from a 504 to an iep that's an identification at least that's the way i take it okay and that's child fine that's also child fine so then you do the evaluation okay so if you're proposing if they're proposing if they're proposing to conduct an evaluation and there's there's either that your your kid was referred okay your kid was referred for an evaluation okay 
by either the school or you or counselor, somebody, somebody referred your kid for an evaluation. So that means they need consent. So you, they have to send out prior written notice for that. They have to send out prior written notice for when they're proposing to change your kid's identification. They have to put it in writing and they have to say, we are proposing to change your kid's identification. We are proposing to do an, an, an evaluation. And then they're supposed to tell you why and what for. For instance, in prior written notice, in the prior written notice, it says, watch this. So it actually tells them verbatim what they're supposed to do. So, oh, I'm sorry. And it also includes educational placement and provision of faith. What I want you guys to do is remember the provision of faith whenever you're asking them for something. There's two phrases you need to know, and you need to get this in your brain. Whenever you ask them for something, anything, whenever you ask them for something and they say no, you say, the reason I'm asking for this is because the only way my child can access the general curriculum to receive faith is with this service. That's what I believe. Throw that faith in there quick, fast, and in a hurry, okay? Faith is everything. Faith is every, every time they say no, you say you denied faith. Every single time, I don't care what it is, all right? So the notice has to include their seven things, okay? So here they are right here. We've done this before, guys. But here are the seven things right here. All right, here they are right there. So one, they have to describe the action that they're proposing or they're refusing to do. So they could refuse to tell you we're not changing your kid's identification or we're gonna we're taking away your kid's IEP. And you're saying, no, you're not. That's a dispute. Okay, that's a refusal. To keep your kid on an IEP, that's a refusal. Okay, or um, to conduct evaluations. Or if they agree to conduct the evaluations, they have to tell you why they're proposing to do evaluations on your kid. They're supposed to explain why the agency is proposing or refusing to take that action. This is what they actually have to put in the notice. They have to tell you all of this. If any of this is missing, they denied your rights. They denied you the right to, min to meaningfully participate in the team meeting process to make an educated decision regarding your child's education. See, that's what they denied you the right to do. Okay. So they're also supposed to put in that letter, if they refuse you, a description of each evaluation they use to come to this decision that your kid can't have, let's say ESY. They have to tell you all of the assessments that they used to come to that, that's already been done. All of this stuff's already been done. The record or report by the agency used as a basis for the proposed or refused action. Now. What I want you guys to understand something real quick, okay, is this. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Milo. Oh, be right back. Okay, good. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, so when the school district puts that out there, they can't just, listen, they can't just tell you guys no. They can't. They have to justify the no. And they don't get to just make it up. And they don't get to just say, well, you know, it's our opinion. Yeah, take, you know what? Everybody has an opinion. Everybody got one. Just like something else, everybody has. So nobody cares about their opinion. And know what? That's good. That's good that they do that. So when they tell you stupid stuff like, um, well, you know, in our opinion, yada, yada, yada. Oh, good. In your opinion? Really? In my opinion, if my kid doesn't have that, you're going to deny my kid faith. My kid's not going to make effective, adequate yearly progress because you took away all the services. For instance, in that kids that I talked about earlier, the kid that has ADD, okay. This is how you guys look at this. So when, this, when you go to the school district and the school district says, the reason why they're not going to give your kid, this is so funny, the reason why they're not going to give your kid ESY is because your kid didn't show any regression. You say, what do you mean? My kid didn't show regression. Well, all of the documents, all of the schoolwork that your kid did, your kid passed, your kid did this, your kid did that. Really? It's wonderful. 
So my kid did all of that because my kid was on an IEP. This was this happened while my kid was on an IEP, correct? They're going to say yes. So while my kid was getting those services, my kid didn't regress, correct? Yes. Isn't that what an IEP is supposed to do? Yes. You look at them and you go just like this. Yes. That's what the IEP, that's the purpose of the IEP to prevent regression. Oh, that's what I wanted to tell you. So when you guys are looking at this, right? Check this out. You're going to die. Okay. When you guys are looking at this, you know what's not in here? There's not one word in here about regression. Nope, there's not one. There's not one word in here about regression that they have to prove regression. I'm sorry, you know what? I'm looking at the wrong thing to tell you that, but I'll go get the other thing. So for ESY, let's see if I do it this way. ESY is 34 CFR 300.106, right? So the schools are always talking about how the reason why, first they set up a meeting that you don't have a snowball's chance in hell of getting it resolved until the next school year, right? Okay, because they deliberately set up the team meeting to discuss ESY at the end of the school year. This is going to be bad for them on several for several reasons. And I'm, I'm going to get to each one of them. Okay, so under, let me see, I got to find it. 306. Oops. Wow, I go too fast. Okay, under 300, 106, extended school year services. Let's look. Let's look and see what it says. Okay. okay. So let's see if we find the word regression. Let me do that. I'm going to do a control F, and I'm going to type in the word regression. Well, guess what's not in there? The word regression. Okay. Let's look at it again. So let me see. How big is this? Oh my, look, it's not even a half a page. Extended year school, extend ESY services. Each public agency must ensure that extended school year services are available as necessary, wait for it people, wait, to provide FAPE. Consistent with paragraph A2 of this section. A2 says, extended school year services must be provided only if a child's IEP team determines on an individual basis, in accordance with 320 through 324, those are the development of the IEP, those are goals and objectives, that the services are necessary for the provision of faith. It doesn't say to prevent regression. It says for the provision of faith. Okay? In implementing the requirements of this section, let me tell you what they can't do. Under the federal law, this is what they can't do to your kid. They can't limit extended school year services to a particular category of disability or make unilateral or unilaterally limit the type amount or duration of those services for the summer for the school year for the extended school year okay the definition in this section the term extended school year services means special education and related services that are provided to a child with a disability beyond the normal school year in a public agency, a public school, in accordance with the child's IEP, and at no cost to the parents of the child, and meets the standards of the SEA. So, that being said, I'm not amazing, but I love you. Hi, Kimberly. Um, so, we just learned something. ESY is this big, okay? ESY is teensy, okay? ESY is this big. So it's real simple, real, 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 real simple to understand what's in it. And you know what's not in it? Regression. Nothing's in there. What's in there is faith. So here's my thing. So if your kid with an IEP gets good grades with the IEP, your next question to the school district will be, can you tell me where my kid's going to be come September without these services during the summer months? When they say, I don't know, you ask them, what do you mean you don't know? So let me get this straight, you tell them. You're basing ESY services on the fact that while my child was on an IEP during the school year, my kid didn't regress. Is that what you're telling me? They're going to say yes, because they're stupid. Good. You tell them to put all of that nonsense in writing because that doesn't make any damn sense. The problem with your kid is, is that your kid is going to be denied fate 
because your kid isn't getting any services in the summer. So come September, he's screwed. Your kid is screwed come September. It's going to take your kid anywhere past six weeks all the way into four, at least four months before your child is actually doing the work that all the other kids already have done four months ago. There's the regression. Okay. So, and you can prove it real easy. All you have to do is go get the work from September. You have to save all of your kids work. You never message me back. Oh my dear. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I thought I was looking for you. I didn't say, I thought I answered you, but I was looking for you in the, call me, um, what's tomorrow, Friday? I keep telling people to call me and then, oh, crap, breaks loose over here. Um, trying to think. If you can, can you call me? Um, my number is 989-632-632. 1031 text me first okay inbox me again and i'll send you my telephone number it's on my facebook page okay it's on my facebook page and then i'll talk to you then all right i'm sorry honey i i, I didn't know i i went in there last night and i thought i was answering everybody and i i thought i answered you but i'm sorry i'm sorry because there was somebody with a three-year-old and i thought it was you but anyway call me tomorrow after if you can do it after four it'd be, i'd really appreciate it well, because I work during the day, so it's real hard. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, so, what the schools are trying to insert is they're interpreting the law wrong. They're interpreting it because they're the only beneficiary. And here's the other thing. So, if I'm wrong, then. So, number one, the school district is saying that your kid didn't regress during the school year with an IEP and the services in the IEP. Wonderful. What the school district can't tell you which is what's going to happen to your kid with 60 days and no services when he comes back to school in September, where that's where the regression is going to happen. And so what you have to do is you have to file a complaint because, and you can prove it real good. So if the, if, so they didn't prove anything, they didn't prove anything. Now, before you have a team meeting, that's, okay, here's another thing. When a school district has a team meeting for your kid to just develop the IEP, part of the development of the IEP is ESY. The reason is that stupidness that they do at the end of the year is to make sure your kid doesn't get ESY. So they've already predetermined the fact that your kid's not getting it. And the reason is, is they're going to tell you, well, we can't do it earlier because we don't have any documentation. What do you mean you don't have any documentation? What is all these evaluations over here? These evaluations, oh, the evaluations is what got your kid on an IEP. And that's how you beat them at this game. If your kid didn't have an IEP, your kid would make, your kid would regress. And that's how you get them. So my kid is on an IEP. He doesn't regress during the school year. He doesn't need ESY. Is that correct? They're going to say yes. So if my kid wasn't on an IEP, would he regress then? And then you go. Okay. Which is the reason why they can't use that as an excuse. That's stupid. Okay. Because all of the evaluations and what you say to them is, then how did my kid get on an IEP? How did we all come up with all of these things my kid needs in order to get faith? How, how did we come up with all, this is his IEP. This is his IEP. So how did my kid get all of this? That's dye on my hands. Got colored my hair. <laughs> anyway. So how did we come up with all of this and why? My kid clearly needs an IEP. Can we agree to that? And they'll say yes. So you guys wrote an IEP based on evaluation that determined that without all of these services in this IEP, my kid would regress, correct? My kid would not get faith, correct? When they say, don't say regress, say faith. So without the IEP, my kid won't get faith, correct? That's correct. Well, isn't that wonderful? Because that's exactly what the law says about ESY services. In order for my kid to get faith, my kid may need ESY services. And there's nothing in the law that talks about regression. That's the figment of your vivid imagination, school district. That's how you get that. What's ESY? Extended school year. Summer program for kids with IEPs. And another thing. So now you have a school district. Okay. So first the school district 
didn't develop the IEP that included ESY. Some schools like to say they deferred it. You can object to that deferment, okay? You tell them, no, you make a decision right now, or I'm going to reject the IEP that you denied my kid ESY. And you can tell it to somebody who gets up poo caca, okay? Because... If they wrote the IEP without ESY, that means number three is the kid does not have a reasonably calculated IEP to address your kid's unique needs. Okay? This is how it goes. Okay? Listen. I know this is a pain. Extended school year. Sorry. Good girl. My district stated they don't. That's against the law. They do offer it. I just told you the law. 34 CFR 300.106. Okay? That's the law. They don't get to say no. They don't get to say no. You file against them. Tell them to put what you just said in writing, honey. Put it. Send them an email and say, so-and-so told me that my son or my child can't have ESY services because you guys don't offer ESY services for children with IEPs. Is that correct? That's all you have to say. They're going to come back and say no because they're stupid. Good. Set them up. Let them say no. That's what I want them to say. It's not a bad thing. Don't argue with them about saying no, let them say no, they're stupid. And if they told you that, they had to put it in friggin' writing. They had to do what this whole training is about, prior written notice. Did you get that? But you didn't. 34, yes, Mary, that's it, okay? That's my girl, keep it up, Mary. <laughs> so, um, they have to put it in writing. 34 CFR 300.503, and they have to tell you for it, show you what they have to tell you, okay? They have to tell you all, I don't know. They have to tell you, they have to tell you all of this. So what they did to you, honey, Diane, is they said they refused. Okay, okay, let me tell you guys something else real quick. When a school district when you ask them for something and they say, well, we're going to wait until the end of the school year to, to address that issue. No, you're going to do it right now. What they're going to say is we never told you no. And what you're going to say is, so what you're telling me is I can't have it right now. I can't have a decision right now. I can only have it. So what you wrote was an unreasonably calculated IEP. Is that correct? Show me the regulation you tell them. You guys tell them to show you the regulation that allows them to write an IEP and omit or defer the ESY question until the end of the school year. That you will not, that they've already determined. The reason why they're not answering you is because they already have the answer. The answer is no. I have never, and I mean never, gone to a school. And they told the parent that they can't have a team meeting to discuss ESY until the end of the school year. And the parent got it. They do it on purpose. So you can't have it. That's what they're doing. And then, so what I did is, once I found out a school district was doing that, and I believed my client needed ESY, I told the school, we're going to talk about it right now. And if we don't talk about it right now, I'm going to file against you. Or why would have the team meeting in September? I said, good. We're having a team meeting in January to discuss ESY. I don't care what you say. That's what we're doing. Now, what you guys can do is tell me no. Put it in writing and tell me why we're not having a team meeting to discuss ESY that you refuse to talk about at the beginning when you felt when you developed this. Because now we have an unreasonably calculated IEP because you guys already predetermined the answer to this question is no. You know, the only time I had clients that I didn't have to fight, fight about ESY are the clients that were in private special needs schools, day or residential. Never had to fight for them. I lived in Massachusetts, so there's all kinds of programs for them out there. So when I got my kid, which still was a fight, even though there's a lot of them, it was still a fight. When I got my kids in those programs, I didn't have to worry about it. That was baked in. The summer program was baked into the private school setting, mm -hmm. whether it was day or um, residential. It was part of the tuition. But if we chose not to send the kid there, because it was also on a per diem, so they lied. When your kid goes to a private school, at least in Massachusetts, when your kid goes to a private school in Massachusetts, the, the days the kid doesn't go to school, 
um, like a day program. It's a private day school. If the kid doesn't go to school, the school doesn't get paid. It's on a per diem. It's called a per diem. They only get paid for every day your kid goes to school. If your kids are in school Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and only went to school on Thursday and Friday, that only getting two days worth of tuition. Okay. So that whole thing about it's, you know, it's baked in is a lie. It's not baked in because if the kid doesn't go, they don't get that tuition. Okay. So they lie all the time because they're no good. Yeah. How should I word that in an email to the school? Forgot the question about you. Um, wait a minute. Let me see what this question is. Okay. You, you just reiterate what they said, honey. You say, according to whoever told you, you say on such and such a date, okay, so-and-so informed me that the school district, and it doesn't matter who it was. I don't care if it was the SPED director, the school superintendent, the president of the United States. He's an idiot, but the president of the United States. I don't care who it was. You say, according to whoever it was that told you this, this school district does not offer a child with an IEP and ex ESY, extended school year services. Is that correct? That's all you said. Not now. You're just asking, right? And then when you get the answer, inbox me. You inbox me, I'll tell you the next email you're going to say. I'll just keep helping you write the emails. That's what I do. <laughs> and then we're going to build a nice case against them because that's a lie, Craig. <laughs> they can't do that. E-S-Y. Exactly, Diane. Okay, so that's how you word it. You just tell them exactly what you said to me. According to so, somebody told you that, right? So according to so-and-so, this school, you guys don't offer E-S-Y services for children who are on an IEP. Is that correct? And then you say, is that correct, comma? You say, is that? You ask the question, and then you say, is that correct? And then you put a question mark. That's all you say. One line, and set, CC it to the, you want it to go to the special ed director. And you put the person's name who told you that. And if it was a special ed director, that's even better. I just want, and then you, if it was a special ed director, you just say, excuse me, you just say, I just need a little clarification. You told me on such and such a date that you guys don't offer ESY services for children with special needs who are on an IEP during the summer. Is that correct? You don't offer ESY services? It's just flat out no. Because what I'll do is, I swear to God, Diane, if that twit comes back and says, no, we don't offer ESY, I'm telling you, you give me, your, you give me the address of the school, you give me all of the information, and I will write... A, I'll file a complaint for the whole school district. You'll get ESY when I get done. I've done that before because they're stupid. They can't have a policy like that. The law says it has to be on a case-by-case -case basis. It's based on the individual kid. It's based on the individual kid's IEP. It's based on the individual kid's disability and their unique needs, all of that. It's not based on we don't have it. Crazy. I hate those people. Um, so the, Okay, good. So I answered you. Good girl. Okay, so, and that segues right into it. That's what five, and, and that's another thing. When you get this, see, they were supposed to put it now, when you get the answer from stupid, I'm going to send you another, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you what you're going to do next, okay? Because you're going to tell her, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get my prior written notice on your refusal to do that. Could you send me that? On or before May 23rd, it has come to my attention. <laughs> Is that correct? That's my girl. Okay. Well, after a year, put a comma and make that I and is little. And you got it, girl. Thank you. I can't type. That's why I always tell you guys what to say verbally. This system doesn't let me type you guys anything. So it's kind of hard. Um, but thanks, Mary. Um, that's what you do. Right there, right there. What you said. Yep. That's what you can do. But would, instead of come to my attention, if you know the person's name, Put the person's name where it says it has come to my attention. Say, according to so-and-so, she told me or he told me that extended will not be offered. No, will not be offered, is, is not offered in this school district. That's what she said. Is not offered in this school district. Is that correct? So put the person's name in there that said that to you. Okay, what you guys have to remember is you have to name names, you have to put dates, and you have to um, put titles. 
okay and the specific thing that you're requesting is called creating the paper trail okay that's what you want to do you got to create that paper trail this is going to help you file these complaints all summer long that's what i want you guys to do i want you to file complaints all summer they want to torture you we're going to torture them let that because guess what guys the department of education in every state is open all year long so if you file a complaint in july they have to investigate and they have to contact the school and tell them we need this 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 and this you have to respond to this it doesn't matter if they're on vacation they don't get an extension Waka waka waka. Nobody cares. They need to go do their job. This is what it feels like. See, when you don't give somebody what they need, this is what the kind of stuff they do. This is what you do to them. You have to do this kind of stuff to them. It makes them upset. Good. Now they know what it feels like. That's what we have to do to them. Then they'll stop messing with you because they don't know. Because I mean, I'm not kidding. I've done a lot of hearings where the opposing party told me that the state special ed director couldn't come as a witness because she was out of the country. And I looked at the hearing officer and I said, well, I'll wait, when is she coming back? Cause that crazy woman ain't gonna be there but a week. It's not like she's going, she, she makes millions of dollars and she's gonna be there a month. I'll wait, I'm good. The hearing officer, and she said, well, you know, we don't wanna, we wanna move forward. I don't care nothing about what you want. I told them that at the hearing, I don't care. I'm gonna wait, the hearing officer said, when will she be back? The state said, She'll be back on such and such a day. I expect her here to testify. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm good. I don't care nothing about that. And the state can't tell you nothing. That was a case that was during the summer. And that was the state special ed director. There you go, Mia. That's my girl. You're liking this stuff, aren't you? <laughs> Uh-oh, I created a monster. <laughs> I love it when a plan goes together. You have no idea. This is what I live for. Parents like Mary and Lee Ann who take the bull by the horns and they're like, I'm in, I'm all in, I'm leaning in, I'm all in because I can't take it. And this is actually becoming fun. It is. It's, for me, it's a lot of fun. I love it. I know, huh? Cool, huh? But so you got to remember, guys, whenever, I don't care if you ask for it and always back up your request. So if you're at a team meeting, right, and you're sitting there, and you say, um, you know, I want the Wilson, I am, I'm requesting based on all of the evidence or based on this evaluation that I had done, I want the Wilson Reading Program. And they say no. You say, good, put that in writing. 